A few weeks ago, I released RatePokemon.com, a project to turn Pokemon designs into data by having fans rate them on a number of criteria. You all got excited by it, and now, not a month later, almost every Pokemon design has been rated by 40 people. That's more than 48,000 ratings in total, submitted by nearly 2,000 different people. That is fantastic. In my head, I was hoping for at least 20 ratings or so per design to make the data good enough to make some conclusions. So to be at double that, not even a month later, is incredible. And it means that we can already look at some preliminary results. Welcome to the Rate Pokemon Data Explorer. On this page, you can still download the raw data, but we also offer a few ways for you to peek at the results. I encourage you to try it for yourself and see what you can find interesting, but let me show you around. Let's start with the top 20s. This section lets you look up the 20 Pokémon with the highest or lowest scores in each category. No surprise, there are three different Diglets in the top 20 simplest Pokémon. <laughs> If you switch to the most complex, it's like you're looking at creatures from a different franchise, and they're almost entirely legendary Pokémon. The coolest Pokémon surprised me. I would not have expected Galarian Moltres and Haxorus to occupy the top spots. I also find it surprising that both forms of Giratina have the same rating when, to me, Origin Form is much cooler than Altered Form. I should point out that the terms used for the ratings were not defined, and that's intentional. For people who needed guidance, we offered helpful questions in the FAQ, but I suspect most people did not read those. The thinking was that we all have different understandings of these terms, but with enough ratings, those biases will tend towards the average. And it worked! The distinction between the most normal Pokémon, the most realistic, and the most biological may not be immediately apparent, but the results have key differences. Normal was presented as the opposite of fantastical, so the most normal Pokémon are dominated by normal types. But it includes Pokémon like Bidoof, Pidov, and Lillipup, which don't appear in the top 20 most realistic. Realistic is presented as the opposite of cartoony. Pidov is very normal, but it's also much more cartoony than Pidgey, for example. On the other hand, the most biological include Pokémon with plants growing on them, still biological, but with a prominent element of fantasy. We also included top 20s by standard deviation. Standard deviation is a statistical term describing how much the points in a dataset deviate from the average. We called these divisiveness ratings. More divisive Pokémon have a higher standard deviation. The divisive popularity rating is the standard deviation of the I like it slider. The divisive design rating is the average standard deviation of all design-related sliders. So the least divisive designs aren't necessarily the best. They are the ones that people rated the most evenly, the ones that people agreed about their designs the most. And the most divisive Pokémon by popularity aren't necessarily the worst ones, but they are the ones that some people love and some people hate. Somehow, I'm not surprised to see Goldengo at the top of this list. <laughs> Let's move on to the next section. By default, this shows you the average scores of all Pokémon on each rating. They have a nice balance of simplicity and complexity that tend to be more cartoony and biological, but still fantastical, and overall, people like them. What a surprise. Pokémon fans like Pokémon. No, that can't be right. <laughs> <laughs> but you can also drill down into more specific results. If you're curious about the scores of a particular Pokémon, type the name into the search bar. For example, we can see that Skeledurge is much more complex than your average Pokémon, less cute, but cooler, and pretty much spot-on average in terms of its popularity. Then you can also save the scores of your search and look up a different Pokémon to make a comparison. For example, we see that Meowskarata is a simpler design, much more humanoid, and a little bit more popular. But wait, there's more! You can look up whole groups of Pokémon. How do starters compare to legendaries? Well, legendaries are much more complex, artificial, and fantastical, but starters are much cuter. We can filter this further. What if we only want to know about fire types? Well, there aren't a lot of legendary fire types, and you can always see which Pokémon are captured by your filters down here, but in general, they are less divisive and more popular than fire type starters. There's a lot that we could learn from different filters and comparisons in this section, but there's one more I need to show you. The graph. 
The filters here are the same as in Search, but rather than a simple lookup or a direct comparison, here you get to plot two ratings against each other, or against a completely different stat. Look, cuter Pokémon tend to have lower attack! I liked plotting various ratings over National Pokedex number, using that as a sort of shorthand for change over time. It's imperfect because Megas and Regional Forms and Gigantamax Forms, they don't have unique dex numbers, but it's close enough for a rough analysis. There aren't any robust, clear correlations, but some are nonetheless noticeable. There has been a slight increase in the complexity of Pokémon designs, and a slight decrease in their realism, meaning they're more cartoony. There also appear to be more Pokémon whose popularity is divisive in the latest generation. By the way, you can zoom in and pan around the graph to see more detail. You can also add Pokémon images and names to the plot, and download it in high resolution. Use this however you want. Something I thought was interesting that I discovered through the graph is that humanoid Pokémon don't seem to be as divisive as they're generally thought to be. There is only a very slight increase in popularity divisiveness as designs get more humanoid. There is an outlier up here that's... oh, Goldango. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I hope that you have fun exploring the data we have so far. You can find this page at ratepkmn.com slash data, or at the link in the description. If you find any interesting correlations, post them in the comments. But like I said at the beginning, these are preliminary results. As more people submit ratings, some of these may change. 40 ratings per design is great, but I would love to get it to 50, 100 ratings per design, maybe even more. The data can only get better. So as you explore the data, spend some time rating Pokémon too, and share the site with whoever you know. There is some really deep data analysis that I want to do, but I'm going to wait for more ratings to come in. I want to express my utmost gratitude to Stapo, who did the heavy lifting in development and made this project possible. Ooh, thanks, Stapo! To everyone else, thank you for your enthusiasm about rate Pokémon, and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next chapter.